Hello and welcome to Sierra Make. This week, my sister and her friend were making candles in the backyard, and I figured, why don't I do that for this week's project? So, I will be making some candles. Candles. Also, stick around till the end to find out the winner of last week's giveaway. To start off this project, I grabbed these cans out of mine and my neighbor's recycling bins, and I rinsed them out, and I'm going to use them to make some candles. So, starting off this project, you're going to need a can and a can opener, and I started off with just trying to use the can opener like a normal one and twisting the little knob so that it would go around the can, but I found that that left weird scrape marks on the outside of the lip of the can. So instead, I went with this kind of squeezing method where I just squeezed the can opener down around the outside of the can until it kind of just popped off like you see here. So that was a pretty effective way of getting the top of that can off. So I'm just going to do the same thing that I did to the Coca-Cola can to this LaCroix can. I have a friend who is obsessed with LaCroix, so if this turns out nice, I think I will give it to them as a gift. Oh, and one thing to note is make sure that the inside of the can is not sharp after using the can opener. I mean, no one's gonna stick their hand inside the can, but it's best to be safe. Also, here you can see it did leave a couple little puncture marks around the edge of the lip, but I don't think that's a huge deal. I also thought it would be fun to try and make a tall candle with this Arizona can, but when I tried to use the can opener method on it, the lid of the can was actually too deep in that the can opener ridge didn't puncture the top. So I opted for some scissors first because I wasn't sure how I was supposed to get this lid off and the scissors didn't really work either. So then I grabbed a razor blade and I just kind of very, very, very carefully tried to slice around the edge as if I was using a can opener with the razor blade. If you're doing this and you don't have a can opener or the can that you're using has a lid that's too deep for it, please be very, very careful when you cut off this top piece. So you can see from the razor blade method, I got a really, really sharp jagged edge on the inside of the top of this can, and I don't want that there. So I'm going to grab some safety goggles, which I might have should have been using for the cutting bit and a dremel and i'm just going to dremel down that sharp edge this step is only necessary if you use the razor blade method so i highly recommend just using cans that you can use a can opener on because it's so much easier and way more yeah convenient anyways now that the inside rim of this can is nice and smooth and won't cut anyone, I can finally move on to the actual candle making portion of this video. So besides the container, you also will need some candle wicks. I got these off of Amazon, but you could also just use cotton string or braided cotton string, I believe is actually better. You also need your open container that you're going to fill up with the candle wax and some glue dots that you use to attach the wick to the bottom of the can. So that is what I am doing right now. I'm just sticking the glue dot on the bottom of my wick and I put it in the center of the bottom of my can. Here's my next can, so let's just do the exact same thing. Make sure that the wick really sticks to the can and also that the inside of the can isn't super wet or anything. See how well that hangs on? And onto the last can. I lucked out here because the wick was just barely long enough to go above the top of the can. Now I am going to use some large tongue depressors with a hole drilled in the center of them and just slide that wick into the drilled hole. And this is just to hold the wick in place in the center while the wax is cooling. 
Speaking of wax, it's time to melt ours. So I have this giant block of wax that my family got at some upcycled, reuse craft store, and my sister is just slicing some chunks of the wax out that we are going to take and put in a tin inside of a pot filled with boiling water. It's important to use this double boiler method so that your wax doesn't. Like actually melt. <laughs> you just need the wax to turn into liquid form. You don't actually want to cook your wax. Anyways, while that is melting, let's go back over to our candles so that I can show you the scents I'm going to use for each of them. For the Coca Cola can, I'm going to use the scent of honeysuckle. For the LaCroix, it's going to be a magnolia fragrance oil. And for the Arizona Orangeade can, it's going to be some spiced pumpkin. As much as I would have loved to be able to use the scents that those sodas actually smell and slash taste like, I didn't have those on hand. So these are the smells that I'm going to be using. And I picked them because they were relatively sweet smelling and kind of went with the can theme. So now we're going to pour the wax into the cans, but first we shouldn't pour on this beautiful flagstone, so we stuck it on top of just a poster board that we had, and now we're pouring the wax into the cans and adding a little bit of the scents. As you can see, I had a lot of trouble getting the fragrance oil out of the bottle and into the wax. But after stirring it together and moving the wick back into the center of the can, the Coca-Cola bottle is done. It's time to do the other two cans with their respective scents. You can see my sister's being super helpful here in helping me with pouring the wax because those oven mitts only fit her. They're like super tiny oven mitts and I couldn't put them on my hands. <laughs> and for this extra tall can, we needed to melt a little bit more wax, so we just did that and also added some more scent to it. And now the candles are pretty much done, so I'm just going to leave them out and let the wax solidify. It's pretty cool in this time lapse. You can see it go from clear to opaque, but it's starting to do something kind of weird, so I don't know why it's sunk like that. But they all sunk. That one's exceptionally weird. So I looked it up and apparently the type of wax, as well as the temperature of your melted wax and the temperature of outside, affects whether your candles sink like this or not. Luckily for me, the internet provided tons of solutions to fix this problem, and I'm going to do all of them. Starting with the heat gun. So here I have a heat gun. You could also use a hair blow dryer, but I don't imagine it'll get as hot. And we're going to use this to melt the top layer of the candle wax so that it evens out. I also set up my double boiler again and prepped some wax to be melted because once I re-level those candles, I'm going to want to top it off again. Oh, also, as I'm remelting this wax, I just have a little Kevlar glove or oven mitt on so I don't burn my hands on the can just in case it gets hot. And I'm using a little stick to poke a hole in the center because it kind of did this little like bubble type thing in the center area. And I want the melted wax to just sink down into that hole so I don't get any weird bubbles in this candle. So back to the facts about wax, apparently the reason it does this is because the wax cools around the outside of the candle first and it wants to stick to something. So it will stick to the outsides of the candle and maybe the wick as well, which is what happened to this Arizona orangeade candle is the wax stuck to the wick and actually kind of pulled it down. So here, while I'm also melting the edges, I'm trying to pull up the wick just a little bit because it sunk below the top of the can. In the end, I'm unsuccessful with pulling it all the way back up to where it was before, but that's okay. It doesn't need to be filled up all the way. I definitely struggled the most with this Arizona can, though, from start to finish. I mean, I couldn't cut the top of it off, and now I have this whole wax sinking problem. Um, yeah, the other cans are way easier, <laughs> just so you know. 
But anyways, that one is done, or at least done enough. So I'm going to move back to the other smaller cans to top them off with some more wax. Do you like this upcycled candle idea? I think it's kind of cool if you want to make gifts or if somebody you know has a favorite type of drink that they always drink out of a can. I know my brother always drinks Arizona and I know my friend always drinks LaCroix, so I thought it would be a fun gift for them. But let me know what your favorite beverage to drink out of a can is in the comments down below. What's nice about this craft is it can be thoughtful but really easy to make. You just have to fill these up with wax and stick a wick in it. So anyways, now that I'm pretty much done, I'm just going to snip off the top of the wick because we don't need it to be that long on the shorter cans. And let's try lighting one and see how it works. Yep, works like a candle. <laughs> Um, I really couldn't smell the scent of a honeysuckle that strong. I mean, it's a pretty, you know, soft smell to begin with, and I didn't add a whole lot of fragrance oil to it. And also, you know, the candle was only burning for a little bit of time, so it's not like it got to heat up a whole lot. And I topped it off, so I used less fragrance oil when I topped it off, so maybe it's just because I'm only burning the top of this candle, but anyways, at least it's still a candle, and it works like a candle, and yeah, this project's done, so let's announce the winner of last week's giveaway! I thought I would include a little clip of me selecting the giveaway winner. Yes, it was between two people! <laughs> and it looks like number one is the winner, so congratulations, Ray's way overdoing it! Please check your Instagram DMs if you haven't yet by the time I've posted this video, I hope that you have a wonderful photo shoot at the mall with this outfit when you get it. And thank you to everyone else who has subscribed to me and also left comments on the same video saying congratulations. I really, really appreciate all of the kind comments that you guys leave. And I will see you next week, Friday at 3. Thank you for watching.